In this video, we're going to go through moderation through interactions. You may recall in Smart PLS 3, and I think version 2 as well, you would just right click a dependent variable or any endogenous variable, and you would add a moderating effect. Now that's not an option in here. So what they've done is actually way cooler. Let's add a moderating variable, something like learning orientation. And I'll just stick those indicators up there and connect this to the dependent variable and to this other endogenous variable, autonomy. But then I'm also going to click and drag to this line and click and drag to this line and so on, or to whatever lines you think it maybe moderates. I'm just making this up right now. Oops. And what you can see is it can be modeled the way we conceptually model it which is by pointing an arrow at the line it moderates. That's really cool. All right, let me add one more line. Now I'm adding it to every possible path. You don't have to do that. It's just whatever you theorize. But when you're done, all you do is calculate PLS algorithm. Go ahead and run that. I'm on path weighting scheme. It ran. It provides standardized path coefficients for each of these moderated paths. Also check this out, I learned something new. You can click on any estimate, any coefficient, and move it around. That's kind of cool. Make it a little easier to read. All right, next we'll go to the report, and we'll look at the simple slopes analysis. Now you can see it has a simple slopes analysis for every single moderated effect. Those moderated effects also come up in the path coefficients tables down here. Learning orientation times participation, etc. But back to the simple slopes analysis. Red is one standard deviation below the mean, orange is the mean, and green is one standard deviation above the mean. What does this tell us? It tells us that the positive effect, it's positive because it's sloping bottom to top, left to right, it's sloping upward in this direction. So the positive relationship between participation and satisfaction with customers is dampened by learning orientation. So we can see the green line is with more learning orientation. The red line is with less learning orientation. So the positive effect has a steeper slope, positive slope, when there is less learning orientation. That's interesting. Let's look at this next one. Okay, now the positive effect of participation on autonomy. Again, it's positive because this orange line, the mean, is sloping upward. That positive relationship is amplified or strengthened by learning orientation. Why do I say that? Well, because one standard deviation below is kind of flat, and as you go up, the slope gets more steeply positive. Let's do this again. Repetition will help, no doubt. Ah, this is an interesting one, because it's not interesting. In this case, you see that all three lines are parallel. That means there is no real moderating effect. Even if you see a statistically significant moderated effect, which I'll show you in just a moment once we bootstrap, if the lines are parallel, that means there's nothing going on. Let's look at this next one. Again, this is a dampener. You can see the green line has a less steep positive effect than the red line. And, ooh, this one's interesting. This one's probably the most interesting. This one tells us, if we look at the yellow line, that feedback has no real effect on satisfaction with customers. Maybe a very mild positive effect. It's, it's almost zero. but when you combine it with learning orientation, the higher the learning orientation, we then create a negative effect. We are sloping down from left to right. Whereas if we have low learning orientation, we have a positive effect. That's fascinating. All right, now let's go figure out the p-values on these if we'd like. The way to do that is to go back and we're going to calculate a bootstrap. Go ahead and run this with the defaults. And if we want, we can look at the inner model. And instead of just p-values, we can look at path coefficients and p-values. And you can see even for the moderated paths, it'll give us that p-value in parentheses. And we learned that this one is non-significant. This one is non-significant. This one's non-significant. This one's non-significant. But this one has a significant p-value from learning orientation to the relationship between participation and autonomy. Now, we're really not supposed to rely on the p-value as much for interactions. We should be relying more on those simple slopes plots, or even better, a floodlight analysis. But 
I don't think that's an option in Smart PLS just yet. But that's it. I hope you like the new features and how it makes it so much easier to analyze moderation through interaction. Last thing I'll do is I'll just show you that report. Here are the path coefficients bootstrapped with p-values. And you can see down here we have our interactions and only one was statistically significant. But again, don't rely too much on those p-values. Look at the simple slopes plots.